Now, as we know, the tragic outcome of the missing Titan sub, a lot of information is coming to light, including all the warning signs that the captain was given, the fact that the Navy actually knew about the implosion days ago, and even James Cameron is stepping in with his reactions. He also tried to warn them. Can these families sue? That's what we're going to talk about as well. Christopher Melcher is here. Let's get to it. Welcome to Popcorn Planet. I am Andy Signor. So happy to have attorney Christopher Melcher back. How are you doing, Chris? Pretty good, Andy. I'm downtown in a, in a lobby here, so outside of my normal spot, but uh, happy to be joining you for this uh, story. Yeah, so guys, just, if it's a little shaky, apologies. Just move your hand over a little bit more now so we don't see your... Uh, there we go, a little bit better. Uh, but there he is. I appreciate you trying to make it work even. I'm sure the fans do as well. He in, Even out there and while he's working, he's... Coming in from his phone. Thank you so much for doing that, as always. So, Christopher, look, this is a sad story, but there there was, as I called it immediately, there was this weird irony to it all. These people going down to this, these depths, uh, there's so much to it. And now even James Cameron himself is calling this out, struck by the similarity of the Titanic disaster itself. We're going to get to his comment in a second, but I want to do sort of a quick breakdown of where we are with things. If you missed yesterday's report, they did find missing debris. Uh, Implosion is what they've deduced. What happened here? This would have happened very quick. And we're also finding out that the Navy detected this implosion sound days ago, very early on when the sub went missing. So this quest for the sub, everyone is speculating. The oxygen countdowns were all moot. Apparently, the Navy suspected this from day one, even before it was announced, as soon as it went missing, there was a sonar deduction that said that, which is kind of frustrating, Christopher, that we were sort of kept in the dark for so long, but that is what she is. Uh, but even, I- I'm hearing rumors, this was insight that allegedly was Cameron himself. Yes, it's horrible. I have reason to believe the sub imploded about 300 million uh, meters above the bottom at depth, 3,500, 3, and that is not so much missing as simply scattered over the seafloor. There's no rescue be done, only as recovery option, if that's even possible. I'm puzzled why the authority is worth, worth holding that information. They knew the crew was no longer with us. I blame poor engineering for the failure. Many of us in the sub community warned the owner operator of the sub that the design was flawed. They used a carbon fi- uh, fiber compos- uh, compo- composite cylinder for the hull, and that's a foolish idea. The owner was on board, so he's paid the price for his mistake, but he took four others with him a sad day. that Now, that was allegedly Cameron's response in an email. It was floating around uh, before we actually heard all the news. And now James Cameron has come forward to echo those thoughts. Now, I, I want to get to Christopher. We're going to get to you, Christopher, but I, there's a three minute clip here. Um, I, I want to just I want people to hear what Cameron says, because he I think we've been waiting to hear what Cameron say, but he also brings the point of the fault here. So let's hear from him. And then we're going to go to Christopher to talk about what can be done about all this. Can the family sue? Here's the quick clip from Cameron. Well, I've been down there many times. and I know the wreck site very well, as, as does my friend uh, Bob Ballard. I've been made 33 dives. I actually calculated that I've spent more time on the ship than the captain did. Uh, you know, as a submersible designer myself, I designed and built a sub to go to the deepest place in the ocean, three times deeper than Titanic. So I understand the the engineering problems associated with with building this type of type of vehicle and all the safety protocols that you have to go through. And uh, I think the, that what Bob said, because I was watching, uh, is absolutely critical for people to to really get the, the, the take home message from this, from, from our effort here, is s- deep submergence diving is a mature art. From the early 60s where there were, you know, a few accidents, nobody was killed in the, in the deep submergence, until now is more time than between Kitty Hawk and the, lo- and the, the flight of the first 747. So if we haven't improved over that period of time, and you know we, we have improved drastically over that period of time, and uh, the the uh, certification protocols that all other deep submergence vehicles, except this one, that carry passengers, especially paying passengers, all over the world in tropical waters, uh, deep coral reefs, other wreck sites, and so on, um, the the safety record is is the gold standard. Absolutely. Not only no fatalities, but no major incidents requiring all of these assets to converge to a site. Of course, that's the nightmare that we've all lived with, you know, since uh, since all of us entered this this uh, this field of deep exploration. We live with it in the back of our minds. But because implosion 
as Bob described it, such a violent event, um, is first and foremost in our minds, the pressure boundary, which is what they call the, the hull of the sub, that the people go inside, is obviously first and foremost in our minds as engineers. And we spend so much time and energy on that. And we use all the computerized tools available today, finite element analysis. Uh, we worked on our sphere for our, for our deep, deep vehicle that went to the Challenger Deep for over three years, just in the computer before we even made the thing, and then of course we, we pressure tested it over and over and over, uh, and so on. So, you know, this is a mature art, and many people in the community were very concerned about this sub. And a number of, of uh, you know, of the top players in the, in the uh, deep submergence engineering community even wrote letters to the company saying that what they were doing was too experimental to carry passengers and that needed to be certified and and so on. So I'm, I'm struck by the similarity of the Titanic disaster itself, where the captain was repeatedly warned about ice ahead of his ship, and yet he steamed at full speed into an ice field on a moonless night, and many people died as a result. And for a very similar tragedy where warnings went unheeded to take place at the same exact site with all the diving that's going on all around the world uh, I, I think it's just astonishing it's really quite surreal and of course PH, PH Nargele, uh the French legendary submersible dive uh, pilot a friend of mine you know it's a very small community I've known PH for 25 years uh, for him to have died tragically in this way is is almost impossible for me to process. So yeah, Christopher, there's you got again. He's the expert. He's done this so much. We've seen it, and now there's uh, reports coming out that the liability waiver protects OceanGate from lawsuits, even if the company is negligent. So I want to get your thoughts because we we have the other one a sad thing is this 19 year old was also in the boat, Christopher. There's a family. There's families like this poor kid's family. Uh, and now there's a report coming in. His aunt said he was terrified before this trip. He did it because it was Father's Day. He was reluctant, but the father brought him in. And it's just so sad because the father probably could have done his research, but maybe the 19-year-old shouldn't have. Where do these families stand legally? Uh, will these liability waivers protect this company? No, no way. There's no way that that... So there's a couple things going on um, that people may have heard of, uh, there's assumption of risk, and then there's this liability waiver. So I'll start with assumption of risk. So when you engage in inherently dangerous activity, you bear that risk. Um, but it has to be obvious to you. Like if you go on a carnival ride and you see people spinning around on this ride, you know that there is some risk inherent in that activity if something went wrong. But you have the right to expect that they're going to use reasonable safety measures in maintaining it and designing it. So you have the right to expect that. So what OceanGate tried to do with this release of liability agreement is to contract with the um, occupants here, these, these guests of, of the submersible, the saying like, not only is this very dangerous and you could die, but that they asked that the participants waive any right to sue for negligence. And so what that means is saying is that even if OceanGate did something reckless or below the standard of care, unreasonable, that these participants couldn't sue. That You can write that all day on a piece of paper, but the court won't enforce that, um, especially because OceanGate didn't disclose all of the risks involved in its vessel that, uh, as Jane Cameron explains really well, that um, this was a composite hull that was made of carbon and other materials rather than just of steel, and that James Cameron explained that the more times you use a vessel like that, it becomes weaker and weaker over time. He says that's insidious, that uh, it gives a false sense of safety. That's why this person was able to, the, the founder or creator of this thing was able to go down many times in it, but eventually then it breaks. So that wasn't properly disclosed. Also, OceanGate represented in its media uh, marketing materials that it met or exceeded the safety standards of a certifying organization.
but it never allowed that certifying organization to do its job to independently inspect um, the, the vessel. So I think there's a misrepresentation there. There's also a failure to disclose the inherent risk of that um, type of vessel. And so there's no way that that liability waiver would be upheld by the court. Well, so TMZ's reporting pieces from the, the waiver, a portion of this operation will be conducted inside an experimental submersible vessel. The experimental submersible vessel has not been approved or certified by any regulatory body and may be constructed of materials that have not been widely used in human-occupied submersibles. They're clearly being vague and saying, look, we didn't get that approval. We're using weird, shoddy stuff. When diving below the ocean, this will be subject to extreme pressure. Any failure of the vessel while I'm on board could cause injury and death. If I choose to assist in the servicing or operation of this vessel, I will be exposed to risk associated with high pressure gases, pure oxygen servicing, yada, 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 uh, properly damage, injury, disability, and death. So, again, it's in there, but you're saying that's still not enough. Yeah. So what James Cameron's explaining is that he spent on his his submersible years with engineers designing this thing and that he was OK putting himself at risk. And he understood what that risk was but he would never allow a passenger on any of these vessels and um, unless it was fully certified and went through all this kind of stuff. So it's just way, way too risky. And what James Cameron's basically saying is, is that a passenger, a 19 year old and his father, for example, would not be able to assess this risk. They, they're not engineers. Yeah. They didn't design this thing. They're not in this submersible community. They, there's no way that they would understand from reading that sentence, the implication of it. So um, again, it, you know, as companies, they can write whatever they want to on a piece of paper and put that language down, but it was reckless and irresponsible to take a passenger on a, this highly experimental and dangerous vessel. So that's why I think that that, that uh, release is not going to hold up. Now, the founder of Ocean Gate was, was on, on the submersible and lost his life as well. So I don't know what the assets of the company and what the level of the insurance is. So I really doubt that there's going to be enough money to, you know, make these families whole. But this this release is sure the company's going to wave it around. But the judge, in my view, will never enforce that against the families. Yeah, that was going to be my next question. Is there even assets? They keep claiming there wasn't a lot of money. They were spending more on the building. And the, the even though those expensive ticket prices, they weren't really covering the, the overhead of a company like this. Does this does this matter? Like the fact that there was press and interviews that they can they go out and the art to argue on behalf of OceanGate and do the nefarious thing, which would be, hey, if you Googled around, you'd see our founder put all these issues out there and acknowledge we weren't doing these things. It's on the, the customer's you know interest to go do that research themselves. Could someone be nefarious like that and pull that off? Or is it still that same idea of, well, they're just they don't they don't know enough about this to, to, to have to even worry to go do that research? Yeah, I mean, it's it's that, that's what my view is. You know, of course, you know, like the 19 year old, he knew, you know, according to that reporting that you just said, he was terrified. And so obviously being put inside a, a sub and being bolted in from the outside of some of you've seen that clip. I mean, it's you. there's no escape hatch. You're actually bolted in. There's no bathroom. Um, there's just one tiny window out in the front of the vessel. This is, I guess, anyone going into that sub would know that they're risking their life. So that's where the assumption of risk comes in. Um, and so certainly there, there was a great deal of risk that these people took going in there. But um, just again, listening to a few minutes of the James Cameron interview, he's explaining that this could have been made safe. James Cameron and the engineers that work with him made their sub out of solid steel. Ocean Gate made theirs out of five inch um, thick composite material, which James Cameron said is not appropriate to use for that. But that um, is good for um, holding pressure within internal pressure, but it's not good for external pressure. So he says he knew that. Uh, he says James Cameron said that there was another person who was designing a similar sub. And James Cameron had warned him. It's like, you're going to die in that thing. That is not safe. You're not to use those materials. So again, it's it's the people who made the sub, who designed it, maintained it. These are the ones that should have known 
should have never allowed a passenger on there. If they want to risk their own life, fine, but don't bring a passenger in there. Don't bring some 19 year old kid on there. So that's why I think they will be held liable. But as you mentioned, there's going to be some insurance out there. There's, but they, they could have gone in, be- not to interrupt but that. They, can they get insurance on such a thing that's not regulated? Well, so that's, that's the thing is that would be extraordinarily expensive to get insurance. Um, and, and if they do have a policy, it's certainly not going to be big enough to cover right. the loss of all these folks. So th- this is, I mean, it's a tragedy on, on every level. Yeah. It just, I, I would be shocked. I, I want the insurance company that's going out there <laughs> doing this kind of risk. It doesn't seem like insurance companies would ever <laughs> want to take those types of risks. Uh, but yeah, it, it's just sad that the sun really gets me. It makes me so angry. This guy was just the, the CEO. I'm, I'm mad at him. I'm mad at him because as as Cameron's noticing these ironies of just like just everything, these wealthy people, the Titanic, the, it's all so strangely surreal. Um, and uh, it, it's a. I think that's why obviously this story took a hold so much to people as we were counting down. But it turns out that wasn't even a realistic countdown. This all the other big breaking news is that, yeah, they, they suspect this happened pretty immediately which is, I guess, a saving grace in this to know that they weren't suffering or terrified for the days we thought they were. It was, from all accounts, it would have been very fast as soon as that happened, um, which I guess gives some relief to know that they weren't suffering for long. Uh, but wow, it, this is crazy. So we'll keep you guys updated if anything ha- does happen regarding the lawsuit. It is good to hear Cameron come out. It does make sense. That quote that was attributed to him does seem like it's him because I think he knew, what am I going to comment on? It's go- like, let's wait. Uh, and now he's here giving ABC, his parent company, the official word, uh, and I think smart word here. So th- good on him for coming out here and helping to give the closure. Thank you, Christopher, for being here. Guys, make sure you go support and follow Christopher over on Twitter at CA underscore divorce. Always appreciate your insight. We'll be back with more content here soon. Make sure you hit that subscribe button. Hit that bell for all alerts. Smash that like button and leave a thought down below. What do you think? Are you as angry as I am? Uh, what do you think is going to happen here? What do you want to see happen here? Should there be better regulations? Leave all your thoughts down below and stay tuned for more. Thanks again for watching.